Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things could get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back Mark Holton, who played Francis in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Last time he was on, we talked about so many of his movie credits, I brought up the movie Stooge Mania, which, uh, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of people, uh, of course, don't know. Uh, you should check it out on YouTube, it's hilarious. And, uh, Mark had told me uh, that it wasn't one of his favorite experiences uh, making a movie, and he told me a, an unfortunate story, um, anecdote, and then I decided to move on from it. He, di he didn't seem like he wanted to talk about it, but then he told me later in email he did have some more stories from it that he wanted to bring up, so we're going to talk about it today. And um, I also saw in his IMDb... Uh, he has a, a, a movie in the works uh, that he's going to make post-COVID, I guess. And let's see how accurate uh, that IMDb entry is. And it's going to be a great conversation. Mark is hella cool. And we'll have a great conversation in the midst of today's election. Fingers crossed. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with... Welcome back, Mark. How are you today? I'm doing well. I have a little bit of uh, seasonal uh, problems with my schnozola, but I will try to get through this without wrecking your show. <laughs> I have a little bit of a cough, too, but it's not a COVID cough or anything. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's something that I just have seasonal as well. And, yeah, I'm having a little bit of stress because of uh, today's election. Uh, aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> it's insane, but all I could say is fingers crossed ho and hope for the best. Right. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, last time you were on, we were talking about <clears throat> a lot of uh, the cult classic movies you've done. And um, I had brought up Stooge Mania, and you had brought up... Uh, that unfortunate story with the girl getting the pie in the face and cutting her face. And then yeah. I kind of decided to m move on because it wasn't um, a happy experience. But then you mentioned to me in email, um, uh, you forgot to tell me about Mousy Gardner. Yeah. Yeah, so well, tell, tell me about... I didn't realize you were such a, a big uh, stooge fan, you know, and... Uh, yeah. You're probably somewhat of a stooge historian, I don't know. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Um, that was uh, that was something that I that I forgot to mention was the, the best thing about the whole experience with Stooge Mania was certainly Mousy Gardner, and uh, they had brought this guy onto the set as an advisor. Yeah. And uh, he, he he got the the three Stooges off the. Uh, to himself or whatever and started asking his questions and, you know, a very charming, funny guy. And, uh, of course, we had a million questions for him and for every uh, question we asked him, we got three or four answers and then another 12 questions would pop up and he just kept us roaring with laughter. <laughs> guy knew jokes, uh, you know, going back to vaudeville, he was, it was, he was a, a true living piece of history from vaudeville to early Broadway, uh, the World War II years. Uh, and, and I didn't realize until recently uh, how, how much of a, uh, a patriot this guy was. I mean, he was, he was at the, you know, fighting Rommel yeah. in, uh, in South Africa. <coughs> wow. Or North Africa, I'm sorry. No, he wasn't in South Africa. He was in North Africa where Rommel was. The guy got uh, got tossed a couple of times, injured pretty badly. Uh, had made the uh, you know technical sergeant. He gets back to the states. They they patch him up or whatever. He goes right back into USO. And then pretty soon they've got him uh, in the uh, European theater of operations, entertaining the troops. And then to come to find out, he went on and did it in uh, in uh, the Korean conflict and Vietnam. So this guy. Um, this this guy was a, a trooper. I mean, he he was out there on on the front lines, uh, 
making sure our troops were happy. And I'm, I'm sure that's where a, a lot of, uh, you know, bonds were forged between uh, him and other people that were doing that at that same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, that, that was that was very interesting to, to learn about his, uh, you know, service to his country. Um, mm-hmm. And then, my goodness, his... his, his uh, his life, uh, you know, encapsulated all these eras and decades and before we ever get to the Stooges. And then, uh, you know, he, his, uh, a, lot of, a lot of stories about Ted Healy, uh, you know, claiming that I can pick any three guys off the street and turn them into a Stooge within a week so I can fire any of you guys. You, <laughs> seems like he's kind of a scrappy dude. I don't know. But, um... Mm-hmm. Now she had, you know, a lot of stories about the, the, the Stooges, too, because he uh, he knew these guys on Broadway. He knew Curly Howard. He said Curly Howard had a beautiful, huge, blonde head of hair and was absolutely a chick magnet. He said he'd go home with, you know, two showgirls a night. I had a, you know, a pretty, a pretty good time out of there for a while, I think. Which is something, you know, when you hear, suddenly, you know, you really don't think about that. But, uh, but that was uh, the reality of uh, the guy's life. I mean, he, he, uh, he, had, a, he had a charmed career uh, before he ever, you know, made the transition to film. Yeah. Yeah, Ted, yeah, they were called Ted Healy's Lost Stooges, like, later on. Um, him and the other two guys, they were interviewed for this little documentary that was released on home video about the Three Stooges that I used to rent when I was a kid, I remember. And it was so funny seeing these, you know, 80-year-old guys bickering and stuff. It was, it was pretty funny. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, hearing all those stories, oh, God, that must have been something. And uh, did, did you get to know him pretty well after that? Well, we, we kept in touch, mostly by phone, um, after the film. Mm-hmm. And uh, one day he goes, let's go have lunch. I said, okay, let's do it. And he had a really nice apartment in the uh, residential section down from what we think of as Hollywood Boulevard. And uh, went up and saw him and visited with him. And we went, to, I forget where we went to lunch, probably someplace like Musso and Franks or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, of course, the, the stories just kept you know, pouring uh, the history, you know, and he's throwing out names that he wasn't name dropping. That was just part of his life, you know? Yeah. And uh, we got back to his apartment and he had his little command center set up, you know, he's got his couch and a big, uh, big long coffee table with all everything he needs on there. Big old, you know, like 400 pound phone. We're talking what, 84, 85 at this time. Right. And, uh, the phone rings. He has this about a 15, 20 minute conversation. I can hear the guy's voice on the other end, kind of in and out. And they're laughing as they're telling old stuff, uh, old stories about, and do you remember whatever, you remember the time this guy did this? And this? yeah, yeah, and they were just tackling to each other, just, uh, you know, living it up or whatever. Finally, the phone call ends. And he goes, he goes, you know who that was? And I said, no, I have no idea. He goes, it was my buddy Bob Hope. <laughs> I want to check in on me. Uh, oh, really? Uh, okay. I just sat here through a, a you know, a, yeah, I, I have been in Hollywood, what, two or two years? And, and here this guy, you know, I'm sitting in this guy's apartment, and he's talking with Bob Hope. But then, you know, knowing, uh, uh, my God, the, the, uh, the amount of time he spent with USO or whatever, those guys had to have, you know, been traveling together at some point. Right. You know, and I probably had a probably had a relationship before World War Two ever started. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, in the in the movie, you and him are hitting each other with those bad puns. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. One of, one of the I want to say, and 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 uh, I'm not quite sure, but I believe it was Armin Shimmerman. Hmm. Played Larry. I think it was him that had worked at the old actor's home for a short period of time and, and we used to care for him uh, after he had a stroke. And, you know, uh, 
we had, of course, you know, a, a millions of different rubber bats and hammers and shovels, anything you can imagine. They're all out of this hard black plastic or uh, rubbery kind of thing. But when you got hit with one, if you wanted to sell it, you had to give somebody a pretty good blow. So <laughs> Uh, he goes, you know, Bob, I just remember, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Fine, you know, taking care of him or whatever. No wonder he had a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> With all these blows to the head, repeatedly, take after take, film after film. And uh, he, he pretty much convinced himself that that's, that was uh, what had caused that. And I believe, uh, I believe Mo, didn't he also die of a stroke or had a stroke before his death, I, I believe? Uh, I, yeah, I think you're, so. You're the, you're the pro he, on this. I, I, uh, he died in, on. let's see, I know he died in 75. Um, I think him and uh, Larry died a couple months apart from each other. And uh-huh. let me see, let me look it up here. Uh, he had lung cancer, actually. Mo had lung cancer. And... Uh, let's see, Larry, he, he died of, he had, he had a stroke, yes. Well, it makes sense that, that Larry had the stroke because Mo was always hitting him. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you think about it, Mo beat the crap out of everybody, but it was always, you know, Mo didn't get, uh, nearly the, the amount of, uh, head impacts that the, the rest of the guys did. Yeah. <laughs> have you have you ever met Curly's grandson? Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get an interview with him. He does um, he does a lot of interviews and stuff uh, about his grandfather. Um, did you watch a lot of uh, Three Stooges shorts to like embody Curly? Well, I grew up watching the Three Stooges, and uh, you know, had a steady diet of the Stooges and uh, oh, Abbott and Costello, Laurel and Hardy. Uh, you know, that was uh, if there was any of those guys are on. You know, I was all over it. I had three whole channels to choose from growing up. So yeah, I saw a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, way way before you know that uh, you know my my life took me in that direction. Uh, Ed Curley was always my favorite. It just, you know, he was always my favorite. Shemp was great. Um, the Joe Besser, yeah, he was okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but but my favorite was always uh, Curly Howard. Yeah, mine too. I mean, my dad and I, we'd watch and just laugh hysterically. We still do whenever we get together. And his 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 dad and him, they they did the same thing. It's like a family tradition. Yeah. I, I think I, I played, you know, as my sons were growing up, we'd, we'd, uh, we'd, we'd get some on uh, VHS or DVD, and YouTube, of course, has, I think, a few things, but, um, yeah, it's just, uh, I, and, you know, I can't, I can't leave the Marx Brothers out of that group. We had oh. a lot of wonderful comedic uh, entertainment, you know, when, when I was growing up. Yeah. Well, you guys had the theaters. You didn't have um, VHS or cable yet. Um, I did do a Groucho Marx tribute yesterday, as a matter of fact, with this guy, Steve Stoliar, who was his personal uh, secretary for the last three years that uh, Groucho was alive, and he wrote a book um, about those those last three years that Groucho was alive and the whole decade in general that he researched. And uh, he's trying to he's trying to make a, a movie out of it. Uh, he had Rob Zombie attached. To making that one point, but because Rob is known for the horror genre and he has that persona, it's hard for him to, uh, you know, get the okay to direct it. But um, yeah. it's very interesting, though. It's a it's a tragic story about Groucho in that last that last decade when he was with Aaron Fleming, that that crazy woman that was his secretary first. Wow. Yeah, I uh, I would be very interested. Yeah, if that film came out, we'd be very interested in seeing that. That would be, uh, that would, that would be on the list definitely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So how did so how did you find out that Mousy had passed? Well, uh, probably the television, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, you know, I 
you know, when I would get my uh, Screen Actors Guild thing, you know, they would have a, a, a list of obituaries. And, uh, but, but I don't remember specifically if I saw it in print or, you know, heard it, uh, heard it on, on a news broadcast or something like that. But it was, um, you know, I, the, the, the little bit of time that I did get to spend with him uh, was wonderful. I mean, it was yeah. It was like talking to a, uh, I don't know what word to use, you know, uh, not an historian, but a, uh, a historic figure, definitely. Mm-hmm. And uh, do you remember the last time you would talk to him? Uh, the, the last time I talked to him was uh, by phone, uh, you know, every couple of weeks or whatever, and we never uh, made it back uh, out to lunch or whatever. He was having uh, a lot of trouble with his knees and his hips, which uh, I don't know how much his injuries in World War, World War uh, Two contributed to that, but it was definitely uh, his, his uh, touring with, with Spike uh, Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, because Spike Jones would uh, would place the piano stool over a trap door in any theater that had a trap door and send Mouse into the basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Those guys, they were such cut-ups. They just, they did, they got away with so much. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I didn't hear ten percent of of what he could have told me <laughs> if uh, we had had more time together. Uh, but his his daughter uh, was uh, checking in on him and taking care of him, and uh, uh, he, he seemed uh, genuinely, you know, happy with with where he lived and where he was. And uh, I, I don't think he was was ever uh, wanting for you know to, to get out and and stooge it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, um, uh, he was, he was just a, a, a really sweet guy, uh, and, and incredibly funny. And, uh, I treasure the time I spent with him. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that's just, that's beyond wonderful, Mark. So tell me yeah. now, oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I mean, it, it is, um, uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the two guys that, that I did that film with that played the other two Stooges, they were, they were, they were you know, we all got along great. Uh, there were just, you know, some things going on uh, like there are in a lot of films uh, that uh, were just uh, a little bit uh, concerning, yeah. <laughs> as I mentioned before. Well, and... Um, well, as you know, I mean, the guys at Atlantic, they they had a flair for the absurd when it came to making movies, especially comedies. You know, they just they just said, you know, let's put anything silly on camera, no matter how good or bad it is. Let's let's make it work, you know. And this was certainly one of those, along with like the Garbage Pail Kids movie that came like a year later, and uh, of course Teen Wolf that you were in and stuff, and. Yeah, I mean, they were just a very odd, you know, movie studio, and someone should make a documentary about them. Oh, yeah, it, and uh, they, they would have me, uh, they'd call me up and say, would you like to come to a Christmas party? I'd say, well, yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Hey, okay, we want you to play Santa, you know? <laughs> so, okay, you know, you can't say no, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was like a... Uh, gee, I would really like to get out here and have that with all these other people that had done films for Atlantic. <laughs> I'll just pass out gifts and then get my ass out of here. Um, and, well, that led to kind of a, a neat, uh, uh, I don't know what you call it, I just, uh, you know, coming across somebody just that you didn't expect to ever meet. Um, yeah. And it was uh, James Coburn. Oh, <laughs> I had bailed out of there, and I was down on the street, and I'm taking off my Santa shit and throwing it in the car, and I looked over, and there's James Coburn standing there. I said, hi, Mr. Coburn, did you get a good present from Santa? You know, we, we yucked it up, and it took forever for his car to come around, but it gave me a chance to have just a, you know, a little uh, mini conversation with him, which was completely yeah. unexpected. Uh, but, yeah, uh, there, was, there was a whole lot of... Uh, 
okay, you know, shoot it, shoot it. Kiss it in the can. Wait, we're going to argue about it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna throw out any specific films or whatever. But uh, uh, the, the guy that uh, that directed Stooge Mania went on to win an Academy Award for a short right. that he uh, made for the uh, uh, I think the 50th anniversary of the Directors Guild, and it was called Precious Images, mm-hmm. and it was wonderful. He had a, a wonderful partner named Ruben Ruskin. And Ruben was uh, an editor, and uh, and they they deserved that Oscar. But my God, I mean, you know, as as far as getting him out of an editing room and on a set with actors, I don't know if the guy ever did anything else. But I didn't have a good time working with him. I, you know, I I can work with anybody, and I I did what I was supposed to do, <laughs> all chain of command or whatever. But it, there were some days where we were looking at each other, going. What the what is going on with this dude? You know? Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. So tell there me, there has to be some, some controlled chaos, and when you're going in more chaos than mm-hmm. blowing tanks, <laughs> and you're in charge, uh, you know, that's when I start getting a little steamed. But yeah. it didn't happen much. I shouldn't say, except for the. Uh, you know, what you mentioned before, the pie in the face with the metal rim that cuts somebody. Mm -hmm. Uh, Young girl. But anyway, um, thank thank you for uh, for doing this, uh, just for me personally. Oh, absolutely. uh, After we got off the phone, you know, talking about that film, you kind of blindsided me with, I didn't expect to hear about it, didn't know that you were, uh, you know, such a a big uh, stooge fan. Oh yeah, and uh, so I, you know, I was I was pretty pretty negative about the film altogether, and I had neglected to mention the one you know ray of sunshine from the whole thing, and that was Mousy. Mm-hmm. You know. And, yeah. Uh, so so t- so tell me really quick about um, about Tom Sharp. Oh, Tom Sharp. Uh, Tom Sharp and I would just like run into each other. Tom Sharp did a lot of commercials. And uh, you're talking about the golf video, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he, he, he called me up one day and he goes, look, I'm doing this uh, this golf video, whatever. I want you to play one of the players. Because I'm looking for people that don't know how to play golf. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, he, you know, he put us together and uh, we just kind of went out. It was just, you know, like a, a, a video of, of Tom's stand-up. Uh, that uh, I guess you know the golf world really appreciated or whatever. Probably people still watching that you know, that that video. Um, yeah, he was he was a great guy. He was a hoot. Uh, I was uh, he did, he was doing a pilot presentation with James Noble. Mm-hmm. And I want to say Brad. Oh my God, the guy that uh, uh, from uh, Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, uh, Brad Garrett, I know what show you're talking about. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And um, they, um, they they were uh, shooting a scene, uh, and I had a, a, a chair just off camera or whatever. And in between takes, of course, we're all talking, and uh, Tom had, you know, done that little video or whatever, so I felt, uh, you know, confident enough to, to chime in or whatever, and they had a you know, a few times, I think it was uh, one of Tom's lines, like, well, you know, this line is, is just not funny. I mean, it's, uh, what do you do with uh, the guys working at a candy factory? I mean, that's not going to get a laugh. I said, well, uh, I have a suggestion. Why don't you say, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's been promoted from uh, uh, Mountain Pounder to Net Cruncher or something stupid like that. Yeah. And I, don't, I don't know if it made it in or not, but... Uh, that was, I guess, one of the last times I saw him, I think... It, I think I went by his house a couple of times after that. I don't. I don't think his wife liked people showing up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made it past the front door. <laughs> yeah, I, I've talked to a couple people uh, uh, in stand-up comedy who who knew him and stuff. They say he's like back in Detroit, and uh, you know he retired from the business and stuff. But I thought he was brilliant. You know, uh, he he'd go up on stage and uh, sing acoustic songs and make fun of his own bald head and stuff. Yeah. He used to try to encourage 
me to do stand up or whatever. He goes, You need five minutes. You get five minutes, you can do anything. Yeah. You get a solid five minutes, keep it clean so it can play on television. Right. And uh, and then build your persona around that. And uh, and of course I just I just wasn't there. Um, it just it wasn't my gig, you know. I I would have had to have been uh, you know, a a comedy team, that would have worked. But uh, <laughs> Those were, were few and far between even then, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, uh, Ch- Cheech and Chong had broken up, and there really wasn't any more comedy teams after that. Well, there was a, somebody in Jamie uh, that, that played for uh, quite a while. You know, they weren't that big on television or whatever, but they, they seemed to, you know, do the circuits, and, and uh, they, were, they were pretty funny. They had a uh, a routine about uh, uh, Eddie Griffith's show that uh, was it was silly, but it was hilarious. I don't know. I can't remember exactly. Um, I can't even call, I can't even tell you their names. Why am I talking about this? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Last time uh, we talked uh, about a month later, I talked to uh, Judd Oman, who played Mickey in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. You found a Judd Oman. He's on Twitter, yes. <laughs> I'll be damned. I thought he had disappeared. Yeah. Completely. <clears throat> I asked maybe four questions the whole two hours we talked. He just kept taking me to one story to another, spinning me off in a million different directions. But he was great. He's very smart and very insightful to talk to, you know. And, you know... Um, it was a very interesting interview, one of the most interesting ones I've ever done. Wow. What, what uh, episode is that? Oh, uh, God, I've done so many. Uh, let me find the number, or maybe I'll just send you the link. I'll just send you the link, and uh, you can listen to it. Uh, have I been up, by the way? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, you know what? It, 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 when these things come out, I, I end up hearing them and then wait to hear them with other people, and it never happens. <laughs> what do you mean? Uh, yeah. Huh? What do you What do you mean it never happens? Uh, well, you know, when I you know schedule, you want to you want to come over and listen to this, or 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 have you listened to it yet? Oh, like, oh I'm going to. I'm going to. You know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I also uh, re- reached out to Patrick DeSantis again, and he didn't respond. So I guess I'm never going to talk to him. But so it's okay, you know. That's his right. Um, have you have you talked to Mark Jones? I have, I have actually, <laughs> uh, and thank you for uh, hooking us up. Yeah, uh, he called me a week after I had given him your info because he had some internet problems and he couldn't find it. You know, and then he ended up calling me, and I was going through a very dark place at that time. My mother had just taken a fall, and um, we we just talked for about two minutes or whatever, and that was that. But I'm glad that uh, you were able to get through to him. Oh yeah, it it seems like we're uh, you know we we were in a, you know a different place in a different time then, but it seems like you know we're we're developing a friendship now that we didn't have time to. You know, back then, uh, finding out, you know, there's, we have a lot of uh, uh, things in common. And, uh, you know, we make each other laugh. I mean, just with a stupid text. Yeah. <laughs> it's, brought in, it's brought in people together, for sure. Did I was looking on IMDb. Did you sign on to do a movie called Stream? I did. I'm shooting it in uh, January in... Um, a wonderful old uh, historic resort in Gettysburg, and it turned out to be a, a perfect um, a perfect uh, uh, setting for this film. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's uh, it's it's moving along pretty fast, actually, a lot faster than I thought it was. Uh, they, they were going to originally shoot it in New York State. And mm-hmm. I guess we know why they're not shooting it there anymore, say no more. <laughs> uh, but uh, but they they found that you know a, a great great place to shoot the movie, and they can they can house the entire cast and crew at the same time. Uh, and uh, and the cast cast list is, is building out. You got some uh, you got 
got some good good talent coming in there from uh, uh, you know, from a lot of different directions. Yeah, I know uh, Felissa. She's a sweetheart. I haven't uh, interviewed her yet. She's just super busy, but she's a sweetheart. Jeffrey Combs. I met him. He's an interesting guy. Yeah, I I, I can't wait to meet this guy and these guys. So, you know, it's 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 going to be a lot of fun. I didn't. Uh, I, I ran into uh, the writer director uh, Michael Levy. Mm-hmm. I ran into him at. Uh, the, the very first uh, convention I ever went to, and uh, we we hung out. He uh, he would come by my table or whatever, and then I, and then uh, we were staying in the same hotel, so we ended up having some drinks together and and hit it off or whatever. And uh, uh, you know we we exchanged information, and he uh, contacted me. He said, you know, he said the the thing that that the movie that made me want to make movies in the genre was Leprechaun. <laughs> and I would love to have you uh, in this film. And I thought, wow, I, you know, uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, you know, he, he um, cre- credits uh, that film and, and my performance in that, so he wanted to definitely bring uh, Ozzy into the fold. It, it's not as Ozzy, but, but oddly enough, he named the character Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the similarities uh, probably in there, but uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, it, it'll be a it'll it'll be a short sweet uh, in and out, uh, which is just fine with me in, in any January. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Awesome, Mark. Well, I thank you so much for coming back on today, and I hope uh, um, yeah you stay healthy, stay safe um, until then, until you make the movie, and I hope it's a pleasant experience for you. Well, thank you very much. I hope you feel better. How's your mother doing? She's doing better. She's got her good days and her bad days, but she's good for the most part, and um, we're just you know taking it day by day. Oh, thank you so much. And um, don't let the uh, the results of today's election, election get you down or <laughs> don't party too hard if, if it wins in your favor. Oh, I don't, I don't think, you know, we'll, we'll either know uh, a lot sooner than we think we're going to know or we're not going to know for days. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I've been through a hanging chat or two, so yeah. we'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, Mark. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. Bye-bye, Tommy. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Mark Holton. Ain't he a cool dude? I <laughs> love having Mark on. Great guy. Great storyteller. And glad he came on to tell me about Mousy and Tom Sharp. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Till next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying... There's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes. Yuck, yuck, yuck.